Hi there, everybody. This is Camille Bishak with BEA Entertainment News. I am so excited to have y'all here today. With me, I have... Erica Weiss. And Hayden Kimball. And I am your DJ, Cammie B. First, I wanted to start off our podcast by saying thank you. We have already have 50 viewers for our podcast that's been out for only one day. And I'm super excited and super thankful and grateful for everyone that's been promoting it or has been sharing it with their friends. Today, we are going to be talking about It Chapter 2, the real life It, VMA's update, the top trending music videos this week, Nicki Minaj's retirement, and TV shows that will be upcoming in September. So, to start off, I have Erica and Hayden here, both of which have watched the newest horror movie that has been out in theaters, It Chapter 2. I just wanted to let everyone know that this is a spoiler-free podcast, so no spoilers whatsoever. So, in just a couple of words, could you explain how did you enjoy the movie? I absolutely love the movie. I'm a huge fan of the book, and whenever they had the new one come out in 2017 and they said that they were going to do a part two... I've been looking forward to it for the past two years. Right now, I think it's like the second highest horror movie opening mm -hmm. of all time, and the first one still being It from 2017. So that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, I think it made around like 91 million in like the first three days. Um, I think the only reason it didn't make more is because of the hurricane. Like that did affect a lot of sales. And then some people were complaining about the runtime because it's around three hours or close to three hours. It is a long movie. But... I think like, pe like people who read the book know that there is a lot of material that they have to put in. And even the director said himself that he still wants to shoot more stuff. Maybe put it on the DVD, like not put it in theaters, but oh, wow. there's still a lot that needs to be put in the movie. Because I think people who don't know the story walking out of the theater, they're going to be like, wow, like I wasn't that scared or... Um, you know what was that about but if you know like the tr like the story you can see it's so much more than that like it ta it's about loss of childhood innocence and really coming together you know strength through unity and everything well i mean it yeah. is a thick book it's i mean it's a thick book that's why i brought this it's over a thousand pages goodness um yeah. before i get into questions hayden what about you I'm going to like piggyback off of what Erica said about the childhood innocence. I think what I really like about the It movies is it kind of has that nostalgia feel to it. It kind of makes you think, man, that's what I used to do. You know, like it gives you that sense of wonder from when you were like a preteen. You know, like these kids were probably, what, 12, 13 in the first movie. And then now here they are 27 years later as adults. And even then, like, you know, you find yourself relating to the adults as well. And I mean, props to whoever casted the adult versions of these characters, particularly Eddie. Like, I thought Eddie stood out from everyone, like, because he looked the most like he did in the first one. And I, I mean, you know, from an acting standpoint, because I mean, like, I'll, we're all actors here, mm -hmm. um, you, you gotta tip your hat to both the, the child actors and the adults. Yeah. They, they brought it. That was one of the strong points of this film. And also, of course, Bill Skarsgård as, <laughs> yeah. as Pennywise. I mean, let's let's address the elephant in the room. True. Yeah. Bill Skarsgård brought it like he always does. Yeah. I mean, it's just all around great film. This, it was, I think I thought it was kind of lacking in the scare department, but I think it was because they were just trying to put so much story into it. Pennywise wasn't used as well as he could have been. Having said that, it's not completely lacking in the scare department. It was just not like it was the first go round. Okay, so I have some questions mm -hmm. because I personally have not seen It Chapter 2. The most that I know about the story is I watched the re-release of It Chapter 1 in theaters. I was lucky enough to get prime seats at AMC theaters where it's the rumble chairs. Oh, nice. So every oh, time nice. like the music came on, like I could feel yeah, it going cool. around and it just made me want to go see Chapter 2, but I didn't have time. So I wanted to ask as a person that hasn't seen Chapter 2, Y'all both mentioned that the jump scares and the scary part wasn't as strong as the previous movie. Is that correct? Yes. I mean, the thing is, is that there's going to be people that go see the movie and that get scared easily that will get scared about like some of the jump scares in the movie. But I think they really want to focus more on them coming together. Like, that's another thing, like with the movies, they do show that, you know, they experienced a lot of childhood trauma. And then, you know, some of the real monsters were people that they knew in their life. Mm. I mean, one of their dads was very abusive. 
I don't know if that's I remember spoiler or not. The, oh, no, I think a no, good way of, like, describing it yeah. is that the monster isn't the only monster in the exactly. in the story. It's yeah. sometimes the people within our lives that are the monsters, too. Yeah, Pennywise yeah. isn't, I mean, yeah, he's scary, but he really isn't the real monster, I think, in the book. It's more, I mean, I remember reading somewhere that Stephen King said he based some of the story off a incident that happened in his hometown where a gay man was brutally murdered and no one did anything about it that's yeah that was like one of the opening scenes in it too yeah. was was talking about dealing with that sort of it was very hard to watch. violence it was extremely hard to watch i i heard about that like there was um there was like a very big homophobic scene mm-hmm. at the very beginning and a lot of people mm-hmm. were very distraught and disturbed not being warned in advance i mean i mean how could you like it just came out but um i guess warning to any of our viewers if that um content is upsetting be warned before you go into the movie yeah but i did want to also talk about do we get into the backstory of Pennywise the Dancing Clown himself? Like, a do bit. we know more about that? And is that explored in the book? Because uh, I know, Erica, you read the book, correct? Yes, I've read the book. Um, In the movie, they show a little, they show a small scene kind of showing where he started. But again, like, if they would have explained the entire story, because there's a whole thing with good versus evil in the book, and... um. There is a turtle in the book <laughs> okay. that's supposed to represent the good. I'm not going to go into detail about that just in case people... I know the book's been out since the 80s, but in case people want to read the book, I don't want to spoil anything. But they don't talk about that as much in the movie. But if, if they did, it'd probably be like another two hours long. Like that's why they want to add more stuff in and do kind of a super cut, um, but just release it on the DVD, kind of like what they did with the mini miniseries back in the 90s. But yeah, there's a lot that they had to include. So that's why it's a long movie. So if you don't like sitting through long movies at the theater, then it's probably not the movie for you. I mean, it's close to three hours. But it still gets the scares. Like whenever it yeah. does get fear moments, you do feel that, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think with the scares, this time it was more of a slow burn, gory mm. type of okay. horror than the first one. I feel like the first one focused more on psychological horror, which don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm studying psychology and I love psychological horror just as much as anybody. But I also love a good gore fest. You know, I, I love I love slashers. I love everything like that. It doesn't go over the top in the gore department, but then the, I think the worst kind of horror is when they leave it to your imagination. And that movie, this movie, does that very very well. Um, it, it, there's parts where you watch it and you go, "Oh, what happened?" I shudder to think what happened. <laughs> you know, so I think yeah, it, it doesn't completely lack. Like I said earlier, it's just. It's more story focused, less horror fo- focused. But having said that, it's it's still a pretty freaky film. Yeah, um, I was gonna say too that you know, like I said, if people are going in expecting to just be scared, to have nightmares, like you know, it's gonna be like a Conjuring type of movie. You know, they they will be disappointed because it does focus a lot on psychological fear. And um, I mean, the movie deals with like you know neglect abuse manipulation body shaming and like everyday fears more than just i mean yeah it's like the thing is is that it's not just about a killer clown it's much more than that and i think that people um who read the book or like you know study more into like what the story is about will enjoy the movie more if they like kind of have a backstory about it i actually wanted to talk about there is a trailer out i don't know what y'all's reactions are but it's called wrinkles the clown and basically it's a real life guy who is technically like a Pennywise the Clown. I don't even know how to explain it. Apparently the 65 year old Florida man can be rented out to scare your family, your kids show up anywhere. And he just looks so, so scary. And they're making a documentary on him because I guess <laughs> everybody's uh, everybody's on the it craze. <laughs> and it, it was just terrifying. I saw it on my Facebook feed. So I wanted to see if y'all had any opinions on it. What was y'all's take? Yeah, um, I think I feel like this is like the year of clowns because I know the Joker's <laughs> coming out. And oh my then, gosh, you're so right. <laughs> yeah, and then it came out and this, and then everyone's like referring to them. I was like, oh, I'm a clown, I'm a clown. Like, I just feel like people are going through this clown craze. I just hope that it's not like 2016 where people were oh. showing up out of oh nowhere and clown costumes because that was really scary. Um, we don't need that. But I will probably see this documentary. It seems interesting, but I don't understand why someone would do this to their child because I saw somewhere they're like, oh, well, if your child's misbehaving, you can bring this clown but I'm like that's traumatizing yeah also what, what if someone has a heart condition 
I, I've seen so many cases where someone tries to scare like a young child and they didn't know they had like a heart condition and that would worry me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, um, it kind of brings uh, me back, like thinking about this, you know, guy you hire to scare people. It kind of brings me back to, remember that show that was on, uh, I think it was on sci-fi. It was called Scare Tactics. No, but I think I heard of I it. Heard of yeah, it was, uh, I think it was Tracy Morgan who hosted it. And it was basically like they got actual horror actors and like set pieces and everything like that and hired people. And people would put their friends on this hidden camera show where they would scare each other. Oh, wow. And it, that's kind of what it reminds me of because they did several creepy, cl- creepy clowns on this show. And it kind of brings you to that John Wayne Gacy level of fear. That was the original killer clown. That's what kind of what this whole thing reminds me of. But in a way, I don't think people should do that unless they know for sure that their friends will get a laugh out of it once they find out it's a prank. And that's probably just like a person by person basis. Yeah, I mean, this guy's been doing it since 2014. And just now he's getting like a bunch of traction about it. Apparently, this documentary comes out in theaters October 4th. I know that my personal fear of clowns, I will not be watching this. I'll probably go see it. Yeah, same. <laughs> I've got no problems with clowns. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're right. I definitely think this is the year of clowns with a blip back to 2016 that summer. That can stay in, like, 2016. That you know, like, where it belongs. Yeah. <laughs> Oh I'm fine with keeping this part in the past. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but I wanted to switch over. I wanted to talk about the VMAs. Last podcast, we talked about our predictions. I'm happy to say that a bunch of our people that were on the podcast, they predicted a lot of the winners from that night. The video of the year winner was Taylor Swift with You Need to Calm Down. Popular artist was Ariana Grande. We all know that Taylor Swift and Ariana had like the most nominations of the night, so I'm glad that they both got something. Um, the new and push artist of the year was Billie Eilish. The best pop was Jonas Brothers, and the song of the year was, of course, Old Town Road. <laughs> um, I wanted to know if y'all had any takes on VMAs or not. I know that I personally enjoyed the Lizzo part. I watched little clips of it, and that was a very special performance. I will say I'm glad that Taylor Swift won Video of the Year because I feel like You Need to Calm Down was so important to show with the representation. I thought that was a really good music video. I had a feeling, like, whenever I saw who else was nominated – I was like, I feel like, you know, you need to calm down or thank you next. We're going to win because mm-hmm. I remember like those were two big songs. Everyone iconic. loved those music. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> iconic. I did not watch the VMAs, but I did, you know, do research on, you know, who won, who was nominated. Mm-hmm. And I will say, I think the best group should have gone to the Backstreet Boys, but I'm also <gasps> a big 90s person. So. <laughs> I love it. The Backstreet Boys are still making yeah, music? Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. I had no idea I mean, they were still making they were music. They were on tour a while yeah, back, right? They, yeah, they just played in New Orleans. Wow. Not that long ago. Dang. Also, another throwback from my era, the Jonas Brothers. It was definitely... Yeah. The Joe definitely, Bros. The Joe oh, Bros yeah. are back, baby. <laughs> um, I was very excited that they at least won something. That made my little 13-year-old heart happy, I can tell you that. <laughs> I agree. I agree with that. <laughs> I mean, like, as as a rocker at heart, you gotta you got to appreciate the old Jonas Brothers. Because they, <laughs> yeah! were, they were like, you know, <laughs> me, I'm not going to give a whole lot of compliments to modern music because, I mean, I'm a, like I said, rocker till I die, but I do appreciate the older Jonas Brothers, particularly songs like Hold On and, and things like that because they had that sort of rock edge and they had, they had a unique sound. You, you got to give it to them where credit's due. They they do have an original sound even now, God I think. God bless. I love those Jonas Brothers. <laughs> I wanted to talk about, um, since on, we're on the topic of music, the top trending music videos this week. It was Miley Cyrus, Slide Away, Little Nas X with Panini, and Billie Eilish with All Good Girls Go to Hell. I wanted to see which one was y'all's favorite out of the three, and if you can defend your answer. I didn't really watch the, um, the other two because I'm not a huge Billie Eilish fan. And I'll be honest, after Old Town Road, I don't really take a little Nas seriously. Uh, but I think uh, I did watch the Miley Cyrus video. And my take on Miley Cyrus is I like the new direction she's going in. But I want for a music video to make me feel something. And because it's it's meant to be a visual representation of the song. And I just felt I left feeling the same way I was feeling when I went into the video. I did like the, the song. But I think Miley needs to step away from the overproduction of her music. I think she doesn't need it. It's it's almost like a person with no injuries walking on a crutch. They don't need it. And so I think with Miley, if she stepped away from that, it kind of did a more unplugged thing, kind of like what Kesha did. I think she'd be better off doing that. 
hot take from Hayden. Yeah. Hey, Erica. Um, yeah, I think that one of my favorite things that Miley Cyrus did was whenever she sang a cover of Jolene. And oh, it, yes. That oh. was honestly one of the best, you know, I, I thought that, that was her, one of her best moments. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, I, I agree. I like the music video, but I didn't, you know, feel like that impacted by it. But it kind of gave me like a 2000s vibe, which I did like. Mm -hmm. um, but... Um, the lyrics were really, I like the lyrics a lot, like when she's like, you know, move on, we're not 17, and talking about her relation, like her 10-year relationship, because, I mean, that is hard to go through a breakup, and I've never Absolutely. been in a 10-year relationship before, but I can't even imagine the pain that they must be yeah. feeling, um, and I saw that she's one of the songwriters, which I thought was pretty cool. Yeah, that's a rarity in pop music these yeah. days, is to not have ghost writers exactly. do all your writing for you. Yeah. But I mean that's that's a topic for another day because <laughs> I've I've seen that I've been around it and it's just to me as somebody who writes their own music it just kind of feels cheap when and it cheapens the whole experience when you find out someone else wrote the song by your favorite artist. I would have to say my favorite ones were definitely Billy's um, "All Good Girls Go to Hell." I love what she's doing now, especially being awarded VMA's Best Push Artist and Best New Artist. I think she is doing awesome stuff like she just creates a new sound that i think a lot of people can connect to and i'm very excited to see where she will go i'm also very excited to see where uh, little nas x's career goes too i think he's got a great career ahead of him he always posts the funniest stuff on twitter i think he's a bright spirit if i had to say who i'm excited to see in the next coming years it'd be lizzo nas x and billy eilish i wanted to ask what were y'all's favorite upcoming artist of any category and genre um, I like Lizzo too. I think Truth Hurts should have won for Song of the Summer mm -hmm. because I feel like that was everyone's anthem. You know, very. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> I love her. Um, I also like Billie Eilish, and um, I found out that her music video "All Good Girls Go to Hell" mm -hmm. was about climate change, which I thought was pretty interesting. Oh. And because, like, you know, in the music video, she lands on Earth, and her all white feathers are now in oil, mm -hmm. and she's just like trying to free herself, but then she's seeing the town burn around her. And I, what I like about her music videos and her songs is that she, like, talks about, you know, real issues going on. And I think that's just really interesting. I think that she is going to go really far in her career. And she's so young. Yeah, she's very young. I think she's, like, 17, 18. Like, she's very talented. With the impact she has now, just imagine what she'll have in the future. Exactly. Um, I've kind of been on the heavier side of things, you know, mm -hmm. music-wise. But two bands I've really been kind of listening to lately is one that's like kind of established, but since they're from Europe and they're kind of exclusive to Europe, uh, not a whole lot of people across the pond listen to them. And the other one is kind of an up and coming female fronted rock band. Uh, the first one I want to talk about is Sabaton. And um, Sabaton, they're from um, Falun, I think, Sweden. The cool thing about them is they're like that power metal 80s Iron Maiden type of feel, but they write exclusively historical lyrics. So you write, you learn history lessons from listening to these guys. Like they'll write, like whole albums will be written about one particular conflict or something like that. Um, I really recommend checking them out because they're heavy, but they don't go overboard. Uh, their singer's very talented. Their guitar players are very talented. All in all, very talented group. And then um, Eva Under Fire is the female front of band I've been listening to. If you're like, you know, fans of like Evanescence or early Paramore or things like that, if you ramp it up to have like a very bluesy female voice, she's got a very powerful voice. I think I actually think her name is Eva, the lead singer. So songs like uh, Misery, The Strong, songs like that. Very, very powerful band, very powerful singer, good lyrics, all in all. I would check them out if you're like an Evanescence fan. I'm all down for female yeah, front bands. Exactly. I've been listening to <laughs> just I've been listening to like um back and forth female artists whether it's billy or the new beyonce album that came out homecoming what? i believe yeah yes. that's it's just been a back and <laughs> forth of those two yes <laughs> but yeah i wanted to talk about another female artist that we have just recently heard some news from Nicki minaj posted on twitter thursday i believe out of nowhere that she was retiring and focusing on family life and a lot of fans were very upset because they had no idea that this was coming. It just was out of nowhere. I wanted to know what was y'all's reactions to it. And maybe we'll get into why artists feel pressure from the industry to maybe retire early. Um, I feel like I'm very behind with pop culture right now <laughs> because I had no idea she was retiring. Um, 
Did she say, wait, so she explained why she was retiring. She was retiring to focus on family and that she was grateful for her fans to keep promoting her until um, she dies. She was very adamant about making sure that her fans felt happy before she retired. So, and then she posted another tweet giving an apology for saying that it was abrupt and that she would be spending more time explaining why she did this on a news talk show. I know that according to TMZ, she was still making music or she was still recording music at the time. Um, I think that, you know, I think it's understandable, you know, for her to step away because, you know, she I think she's in her 30s. And if she wants to start a family and really focus on that, like, you know, I think her fans should respect that because she's been in this industry for a long time and sometimes it can get the best of you mm -hmm. and you need to just step. I mean, she could come back. I don't know if this is supposed to be like, you know, she's definitely retiring or if she's just maybe, you know, she says she's going to retire, but come back later on. Uh, I know some people have done that before, but I think it's understandable and I think she that decision should be respected. I've had my opinions about Nicki Minaj in the past and they are not good ones uh, to say the least. Um, but that's a topic for another day. I will give her for the first time in my life props for knowing what's best for her as an artist. Um, you made a comment earlier about the pressures of the music industry. Yeah. The music industry in in my world at least in the rock world record labels are a thing of the past. They, you don't really have anybody breathing down your neck in the rock world these days. Um, however, in the pop and the hip-hop world, they're still very much alive and well. So somebody like Nicki Minaj, as you've said, Erica, she's been around for many, many years. So at this point, you would think she would have the clout to live and die by her own terms. Mm. So I think with Nicki, quote-unquote, retiring, I think really it's... I don't see it as a retirement. I see it more to my chagrin as her just kind of taking a step back and then coming back later because Adele did the same thing. Adele went on a hiatus and we now have new Adele to listen to and like we, we can actually go and see Adele live again. But yeah, no, I, th I think um, I got to give it to Nikki. She's, you know, as much as I dislike her music and her choices as an artist, I think this time she's being actually genuine and I respect her for that. I think that's a great answer. I mean, we see so many times how artists are push to produce music props to her for taking the courage enough to come out and say it and with that i want to switch over to our last topic of the day it is tv shows the new stuff that is coming out in september we know that american horror story 1984 the prodigal son criminal ncis this is us mixed dish creep show superstore good place and countless others i want to get y'all's opinion on what you are excited for and why I'm really excited for American Horror Story, obviously. I've been a big fan of the show since Coven, I believe. Um, but what I'm really excited for is something that's coming up a little bit more on the horizon, the uh, chilling adventures of Sabrina. I don't know if you guys have seen it or not. It's an interesting take on the uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch sitcom, mm -hmm. where it's not a sitcom anymore. It's very dark and dismal. It's almost like if you take the original one and start blaring My Chemical Romance over it. <laughs> you, <laughs> I love that you, you get You get a very dark and depressing, gloomy take on it. You get mm. actual witchcraft and a lot of Satanistic imagery. Like, I wouldn't watch the show if you're a diehard Catholic or Christian or something like that. But me, I'm a Roman Catholic and I can still watch it. So <laughs> I, I have faith in even the most religiously inclined and uh, also, the, there's a show called Mayans MC that's mm -hmm. out right now, which is a spinoff of the Sons of Anarchy series. I have yet to watch it, but I'm really trying to, like, sort of catch up on it. Okay. okay. Erica? Whenever I first heard about this, I thought it was one of the best ideas. There's a show coming out called According The World According to Jeff Goldblum. <gasps> oh, my gosh. And yes. <laughs> I mean, that is – props to whoever came up with that idea. I'm definitely going to be watching that. <laughs> I mean, like, it just sounds – really interesting i want to know what's going on in his mind who <laughs> doesn't love jeff Goldblum? exactly his, his mind is an interesting interesting yeah. place <laughs> that's why i'm like this show's perfect so i'm excited about that and i think that's coming out on the new disney streaming service mm -hmm. um and then i'm also excited for um american horror story uh the 1984 because i'm a big fan of the 80s that's probably my favorite decades mm -hmm. but i've only seen like one season all the way through and that was hotel because i really wanted to watch lady gaga <laughs> she um, was good. yeah of so course. but i'm excited to see this when i saw uh billy lord 
um, you know, Carrie Fisher's daughter mm-hmm. was going to be in it, and I love her acting. Oh, I didn't even know she was going to yeah. be in it. That's exciting. And then I saw Emma Roberts was going to be in it, too. So it looks like a good season. I'm also excited for the show coming out on Netflix called The Politician, which mm. is another Ryan Murphy production. Is that with Ben Platt in it? Yes. Okay. Yeah, saw that. That looks interesting. I know. And Gwyneth Paltrow and Jessica Lange are both going to be in it, too. It looks a, like a really good show. And like it's by the same guy who does the American Horror Story, American Crime Story. So I'm probably most excited for those three. All right. I'm super excited for This Is Us, Superstore, and The Good Place. But that's because they just hold a special place in my heart. Yeah. All right. Finally, guys, we are going to wrap up with some last-minute local news. Next week announcements, We Are the Lions is going to be an event happening outside of Fayard. It's an opportunity to register to vote with some American and educational theme games. Wednesday, September 18th, Steph Africa will be in the University Center from 6.30 to 9.30. And there will be Miss Southeastern's interest meetings in the Student Union, um, room 2208, September 19th from 1 to 1.45. Let's just all give a sign out. My name is Cammie B., I'm Erica Weiss. I'm Hayden Kimball. And thank you so much for listening to the BEA Entertainment Podcast.